Hi there, everyone. It's Misty here from the Joy Fidels. Happy Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining me today for another video in my 2020 holiday card series. So in my last haul video, which included some things from my favorite things, I asked, the question of the day was, what do you want to see me use next? And a lot of you said the penguins. And then some of you said the big sentiment because you weren't sure how to use those on the card. So you're, today you're getting the best of both worlds. You're going to get three cards where the main focus is the sentiment stamp, but there are two cards where I use the penguin stamp. So yeah, I hope you guys are doing well. I, I, how is this November? Um, I'm filming this on Tuesday, the election day. So I hope when this goes up tomorrow, it's a good day. <laughs> We'll just wait and see what happens. But yeah, so anyway, let's head over to the craft table and I'll share with you these three cards. Hey everyone, before we get started, so this is gonna be a mix of me talking and then we'll move into the voiceover. But today we're gonna to be using this Wishing You a Very Merry Christmas from My Favorite Things three different ways. And I'm actually gonna show you a fourth way, but we're just not gonna create the card. So I have Mark to thank for these gorgeous papers. So thank you very much, Mark. But these are the type of papers that if you have in your stash, all you need to cut it down, to do is cut it down and then add a sentiment. And you can emboss this, like this would be beautiful if you embossed it in silver. It would be beautiful if you embossed it in purple or any of the other colors that you can pull from this paper. Um, and something like this as well, where you can cut it down, then just stamp this and add maybe a little image or something, and that would be absolutely adorable. So I'm gonna hand it over to um, voiceover Misty, and I'm gonna show you three different ways to use this sentiment stamp. It's the final Misty of this video. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna be heat embossing all three cards today, and I'm using the Misty for the stamping. And I've just measured the stamp set and cut all my card start card stock to fit except for the middle card and I'll show you that so that's probably my first tip is just to measure your sentiment and then work your layers around that so I really wanted to do the chalkboard effect with this card but I don't have any white pigment ink I don't know why but I don't so I went ahead and used my embossing buddy then stamped it with first mark and then I added white embossing powder and now I'm gonna melt it and you're gonna see the magic happen I love heat embossing. This is the first time this holiday card series that I've done heat embossing, and this is the first time this holiday card series that I've made a shaker card. So <laughs> you're getting both. You're getting both, y'all. So I am using, I believe this is the Lumberjack Christmas paper that I got from Echo Park. And my layer for this, for the sentiment, is a half an inch bigger on each side. Then I cut down strips of the ornament pattern to one and a half by four and a quarter they take up the entire um width length length width height of the <laughs> height of the card and then I trim off the bottom because no matter how hard I try to get it straight it's never straight and then I'm just using some scissors to cut it down and I probably spend more time searching for things that are right on my desk than I do anything else I swear so I'm just adding that with some dimensional adhesive and that's it that's card number one really quick really simple but I really love it I think this color palette for Christmas is very striking and Echo Park does it very well all right card number two this is going to have a penguin on it so I'm using this piece of limelight cardstock because this is the color that's in the paper so I don't remember which pattern paper stack this is from MFT but it's one of them so I'm just cutting um my cardstock down to four and a quarter by 11. I squirted it at five and a half. I know you really can't see stuff. I was um, zoomed in. And then I cut the stripe down to four and an eighth by five and three eighths. Now I've cut this white paper just a little bit taller than the sentiment because I'm going to heat emboss it, number one. And number two, when I imagine this card, I imagine that little penguin with the ornament sitting down on the corner of the corner of it. So again, same thing. Use an anti-static tool, stamp it with Versamark, and now we're adding green, green glitter embossing powder. It's so pretty. <laughs> and the easiest way to um, tell if it's embossed, like if the powder is melted, it will change 
sheens. So it'll go from being, and you can kind of see it here, but it'll go from being very, very glittery to looking more like heated embossing powder. So I cut down a piece of Melon Mambo. Um, that's the closest thing I have in my stash that matches this stripe. Doesn't that, I mean, this is just everything. I love this color palette. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and stamp the little penguin dude. And I'm just using an acrylic block for this. He stamped real easy. Um, that's how you know it's a good quality stamp. So the one thing I didn't know was what color are penguins feet? So I got on Google and I found me some orange feet. So, and here I'm using my hex chart to help me pick colors for um, pulling colors out of that paper. And that, I'm telling you, if you haven't bought that hex chart and you have Copics, please, you should really do it. I mean, seriously. So I'm going to get all of my colors down and then you can pause it right here. Take a screenshot if you want to. Um, those are all the colors I'm using. Plus Y09. Initially, I just went in with one color and then I went ahead and brought in a different color, a darker color to blend it. I'm so cute. I love him. <laughs> so it's not a lot of fancy coloring. I'm starting with the darkest color, like at the bottom of his, like his paw, that would be down um, the crease of like under his arm. I don't know what they have. Arms? Are they arms? I don't know. <laughs> and then I'm starting at the base of his head with the third marker. So I'm doing four markers, but the third marker on the head, three markers on the head and four on the arm. So it's C, what well you saw, C, 10, eight, six, and four. And I, I really love how this penguin, I mean, he's cute anyway. Come on now. He's cute. He's a cutie patootie. How to take a water break. I need another water break. <laughs> now that we're talking about it. So I needed to add a little bit of color to the white parts of him to make it look more white. So I used R quadruple zero. So I'm coloring his um, scarf pink. Isn't it so pretty? You know, what I realized I got a brand new coat and scarf last year. It's a black and white houndstooth, which you guys know I love. And I got a red scarf and it hasn't been cold enough and I haven't gone anywhere <laughs> to be able to wear that coat. It makes me a sad, sad panda. So I'm just using one color to color these ornaments and then I'm going to bring in my gel pen, my white gel pen to add just a couple of little dots. And then I'm using E29 to color in the antlers. I almost did a another color but I just decided against it and use that same pink for his headband. So I just did like little circles and dots and stuff just to give them a little bit of something something. And then I used it also to clean up where I'd screwed up. So I'm going to run this through, but first I realized that I'd gone over the lines a little bit. So what I did is I brought in a Copic friendly ink pen. This is the American Craft Precision Pens. And I just outlined the few places where I'd gotten over the line a little bit. And you can't even tell. Love it. I really hate how this camera goes crazy when there's a shiny package like it gets really really deep but here we go i just added the little penguin to the side i do wish i had some ornaments or something to lie down beside him there's ornaments in the stamp set but they have they have the hook and i i thought it would look weird if i'd i don't know i i would add something to the right that's why i added these dots to the top right so your eye kind of goes from bottom left up to top right or top right down to bottom left and then you know how to bring in some shimmer pin again you saw me looking for it <laughs> So that is the end of card number two. He's just so cute. I love it. All right. So this card was the most involved. Don't pay any attention to that red. We wish you Merry Christmas because I didn't end up using it. I wanted to do a shaker card and I wanted to create a frame. So this is the scallop stitch scallop rectangle stacks or square stacks or whatever from my, my favorite things. And then I brought in a regular stitched square. So this is going to make a frame. It is. It's going to make a frame. And then I thought, oh, I'll just use the inside of the square that's cut out to stamp and do my sentiment. Well, the issue with that is that's smaller than the frame. <laughs> 
So if you make this card, make sure that you cut your square to be the same size as the outer part of the frame. If you don't, you're going to have to fix it like I did. Now, I did fix it, and I'll walk you through what I did um, just really quickly because all I did was add it on a white layer, cut it all around it, and then I added that on a red layer and then cut around it. So I had some excess <laughs> embossing powder on the outside of my container, so I was just dumping it on there um, as I did as I did it. And then I'm just using that little um, paintbrush to remove the stray. I, I don't always get all of them, but it's it's good enough for me. This is going to be a shaker card. It's going to be, you're not even going to see it that much anyway, especially because I'm going to add something on the front to go with it. So I am adhering my frame to a piece of acetate. This has just been in my stash. I honestly think it came from three jobs ago. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Um... I think they had it for um, transparency slides or whatever, you know, you put on an overhead projector and of course they got rid of that. So they didn't need this anymore. And I was like, well, I could probably use it. I mean, that's what we do. We're crafters. We use things. So anyway, since this is scalloped, I went ahead and kind of lifted it a little and cut around it. Um, you could use tearing tape if you wanted to. Um, you could have cut it, cut it a little smaller. I didn't do that, but... Yeah, so I'm using the foam strips from Stamping Up. I've just had these in my stash. They're really convenient. Um, I'm sure you can find them other places. Um, I'm sh I am I know Stampin' Up has to private label them. They private label almost everything, unless it's their stamps and stuff. So I'm going to bring in my, um, so this is where I realized that I screwed up. I was like, oh my word. And I was like, I'm not redoing this whole thing. Uh-uh, it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> so I bring this one in, I'm gonna adhere it down, and I'm gonna, you know, try to make it even on two sides, and then I'm gonna cut it down on the other two sides. And that's why I love this trimmer with the wire guide. If you're looking for a trimmer, get the Fiskars one with the wire guide. Oh, so we're getting a little closer, but it's still not close enough. But I go ahead and bring in my sequins. This is from a craft made. I think it's craft made, craft mates, a sequin holder. And I just poured them in there. And of course I had a lot of static, so they got stuck. But you can see there that I added that white onto another red layer. So I had three layers. I do like the look of it though, but it was happy, it was happy accident. <laughs> it wasn't meant to happen like that. And then you can see my um, paper to the left. I'm using a candy cane stripe from Doodle Bug and making a monochromatic shaker card. And then you see my sh stuff going everywhere. I had to add some glue dots to help it seal. All right, so this is the Christmas tree from the Penguin stamp set. And I'm using B quadruple zero. You may see a tree to the right. So I colored that tree to the right. And then I went to cut it out with the dye and it didn't fit. I would stamped the wrong tree. <laughs> I have like four stamp sets going on my table. So anyway, I brought in the two darkest reds. Um, this is B89 and I think B29 um, to color um, because I wanted, again, I wanted this to be monochromatic. I added the blue just to make it look like white, add a little bit of shading, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and die cut this out. Um, this is not the only time I'm going to use this stamp set. I, I guarantee that we're going to do it again. Um, by the way, if you are not in my Facebook group, you should probably go join my Facebook group. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> and the question of the day today is, has, is have you ever heat embossed on a card? Um, and if you haven't, would you be interested in a class? Um, so just let me know. That's the question of the day. And make sure you go join the Facebook group, which is linked down below where you will find something that's happening before Friday. <laughs> that's all I got to say about that. All right. So I am adding um, dimensional adhesive. So at the bottom of this tree, I've put th I've doubled it up. Um, because that shaker card is already up. And then on the tr part of the tree that's going on the sentiment, I added it with um, snail. So yeah, so that's it. Oh, I forgot. I brought in some Nuvo drops. But first, I'm going to put the shimmer on because I wanted them to be glittery because you guys know me. So these are the Nuvo drops. And they're jewel drops. They dry clear. 
And you'll see when um, I show you guys the cards what it looks like. But isn't that so pretty? Oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So here's a look at all three cards. Thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget to answer the question of the day, which is, have you ever heat embossed? So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you Friday for another card in my 2020 holiday card series. Bye for now.